In Commitment 2020, the former head of Guilford County's Democratic Party challenges a longtime incumbent Republican for a seat in the North Carolina House. Nicole Quick faces John Hardister in a district that's become more competitive thanks to court mandated redistricting. Bill O'Neill has more tonight. Hardister hasn't faced a close race in any of his elections, but thanks to his fellow Republicans in the legislature, this district is now more favorable to Democrats. And what's more, the Democratic challenger has outraised the Republican incumbent. When this district was redrawn last year, it went from a gerrymandered district leaning 12 points Republican to a three point race. Uh, the turnout among Democrats in the primary and recent polling shows that it's neck and neck. We're in a dead heat. The base maps we adopted for Guilford County uh, candidly resulted in my district going from one that was a, a lean Republican to really a toss up. Um, so I, I have a very competitive race, but that's OK. Uh, competition's good. Education and Medicaid expansion are among the issues dividing these two candidates. I am a strong proponent of Medicaid expansion. I supported that before this pandemic. That money is currently going to the 38 states who've already expanded Medicaid, right? We're losing it instead of it coming back here to help us. So I think that's one big area where we differ. I definitely support that expansion and more affordable health care. Uh, as a conservative, I believe in the free market. We need to have more choices. Uh, lately, I've been looking into a model where we could expand HSAs, uh, which is a health savings account, uh, where people would have them, we could make it universal, and we could even put vouchers into the HSA. On school choice, Hardister favors charter schools and vouchers for private schools. Quick, on the other hand, has concerns about both. Every child deserves a uh, quality education. Uh, I feel like vouchers and charter schools are funneling money out of an already underfunded traditional public school system and that we should be investing in our public schools. Do you turn off the spigot for the school voucher program? I think we don't increase it. It's been increasing at a rapid rate. So I think we do freeze it until we can do something to return our traditional public schools to at least a national average level of per pupil spending. I think when, when parents have choice, that's a good thing. The, uh, the scholarship programs are geared towards students have a disability or families are low income, and that's how it should be to help them out. Hardister and Quick share similar views on North Carolina's Confederate monuments. What should North Carolina do about its Confederate monuments? There is history there. However, that history is hurtful to a large segment of our population. And we have to bear in mind that uh, those monuments uh, to Confederates uh, represent the losing side and the side that uh, promoted slavery. Quick says that local communities should decide the fate of those Confederate monuments. She supports overturning the state law protecting them she also favors putting them in a museum. What do you support North Carolina doing about the Confederate monuments that are still in place? Yeah, great question. So I think they should be placed in locations where they have the proper context, uh, in a museum or uh, maybe Confederate cemetery, where they have the proper context. Uh, look, I understand that the historical uh, people have uh, different reasons to respect the monuments or in some cases, you have to understand the fact that uh, they can be offensive, you know, to some people. And I get that. Despite raising six times more money than her opponent, Quick questions the source of Hardister's support. I saw a post, a tweet from you on Twitter that says that your opponent has sold his vote to the highest bidder at every opportunity. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, if you look at the uh, last campaign finance filing report, uh, about half of his contributions come from corporate PACs. Your opponent says that you receive a fair amount of PAC money, and I'm wondering, do you see anything wrong with receiving PAC money? Absolutely not. Look, um, money doesn't influence how a vote, but um, PACs usually represent organizations or companies that employ people, that, that pay taxes, that provide services. If they want to donate to my campaign, I'll be glad to accept the donation, but it has absolutely no standing on um, how I cast my vote. How do you plan to vote? By mail, election day, or early voting, which gets underway next week. 
Bill O'Neill, WXII 12 News.